Hi everyone. This will be the third video of my Break the Karakhan series. The goal of the series is to analyze some games featuring the Karakhan and hopefully gather some ideas to help you deal with the Karakhan over the board. The following game was played by Nigel Short, again by uh, playing the white pieces, and Alexander Kalifman, a lesser known GM who was actually FIDA World Champion uh, in the years 1999-2000. Uh, I didn't know about this player at all, but apparently he used to be a very, very strong player at some point. This game was played in the year 2001, and let's see how it rolled out. e4 by Nigel Short, c6, the Karakhan, knight to f3, preparing two knights attack, d5, Knight to c3, this is the two knights attack in the Karakhan, and bishop to g4, the Mindeno variation, uh, uh, maybe less popular one than the short variation. h3 chasing away the bishop, bishop retreats to h5, d4, uh, getting the pawn center, e6, closing the pawn chain once, once the bishop is out, bishop to d3, uh, supporting the pawn, developing the bishop, knight to f6, attacking the pawn, and e5. Uh, and so we've reached the advanced variation of the Karakhan in some sense, but uh, but it's a quite different uh, variation from uh, the regular advanced. Uh, the knight retreats to d7, we've got g4, uh, creating some space on the queen's side seems quite risky, but, well, uh, chasing away the bishop and exchanging it may benefit white later. Uh, bishop to g6, and the bishop, white bishop, takes g6, h takes g6, opening up the h file. Uh, seemingly, uh, opening up the king's side and black's h rook uh, is, is risky. Uh, for white, but as we will see, it would it will work out quite well, given that uh, black does not have any real uh, threats. Knight to retreats to e2, c5 attacking the pawn chain and c3, uh, c3 to support the pawn. Knight to c6 attacking again and king to f1. Um, playing the king to f1 or f8 by black. Uh, is quite a modern idea, uh, inspired by computers who like to expand on the sides. Uh, but here it makes a perfect and intuitive sense, because the black's rook, black's h rook, is pressing on the, uh, on the king's side. So in order to get the king safe, we play f1. Uh, bishop to e7, normally developing, uh, black can still castle both sides. Uh, king to g2, playing safely, queen to b6, preparing some pressure against the b-file, uh, hindering the development of the bishop, rook to b1, supporting the pawn, a5, which is already a quite uh, a committing move, uh, bishop to e3, supporting the pawn, a4 even, uh, extending, the, getting some more space, on the queen's side and knight to f4. Uh, hoping to reposition the knight maybe to b4 uh, once the pawns on d4 exchange. Mm, queen to a6 mm, and it's this quite this move cannot be called a, a great one and as we will see uh, king the this queen will not be uh, a happy piece throughout this game, that its, its activity on the side will be uh, minimal. So, uh, h4 to get some space on the king's side, a3 even, uh, the a3 is already a very very much committing move, as particularly uh, given that the b pawn will not be able to support the a pawn anytime soon, uh, b3, c takes d, c takes d, and we've got the knight going to b4, attacking the 
A2 pawn. The threat against the A2 pawn is not strong yet, but it is an immediate threat and uh, uh, and uh, white has to do something about it right away. So uh, queen to d2, developing, connecting the rooks, and castles long by black. Um, it seems quite risky uh, to castle into an open file, but as usually in the Karakhan, um, all the white pieces are on the king's side, so it may take a while before white uh, breaks into um, into black's position. So, uh, knight to g5, forcing, pretty much forcing a trade, uh, but most importantly, improving white rook against the black rook. Uh, if we take a look at the the rook's uh, attacks, uh, potential attacks. Well, um, check on c1 does absolutely nothing. Uh, king will easily retreat to b8 and there is nothing else. Uh, there is absolutely nothing else and this may simply improve black's position and black's king, black king's safety. Uh, so, as I said, the trade is forced, bishop takes g5, h takes g5, rook takes h1, rook takes h1, and white rook is clearly superior to the one uh, that black has on d8. Uh, knight to c6, uh, as we can see, the knight has no good square. Here it covers um, the king on c8, attacking maybe the pawn uh, on d4, but the Pawn is quite strongly protected for now, so um, let's see. Uh, knight to d3, repositioning, going to the queen's side, since that's where the king is. b8, finally, with the king getting it, tucking it into the corner. Rook to h3, lifting up, uh, lifting up to uh, attack some pawns. Queen to b5, rook to f3, attacking the pawn, rook. Uh, to f8, supporting the pawn, quite a sad rook, um, if if you ask me. And queen to d1, and queen to back to a6. Black has absolutely no way to uh, to push on here. The only idea they may have is to pressure the with the f pawn. But uh, as we will see, this is this will not be the best option. Uh, knight to e1 and f6 finally the only pawn break black has but actually uh, this pawn break will help white black will gain no activity here and uh, white pieces will get an amazing bishop which is at the moment quite passive it's just protecting the pawn uh, g takes f g takes f e takes f and rook takes f6. Mm, we've got knight preparing to attack uh, the pawn on a3. King to a8, that's a waiting move. Black literally has nothing to do here, maybe exchanging the rooks, uh, but exchange of the rooks will bring the king closer to the center when uh, the activity of the king is quite imp uh, important. Also, queen uh, the queen can take on uh, f3, and this will also be very good, very good for white. Uh, the rook moves over to uh, penetrate into the into the position. Rook to f8, and here the bishop is harassing the rook, so it has to move to f7. And it is very passive; it is only a target for white. Uh, it can make no active move. Maybe it would be better on the C file, but even there, uh, it would have no entry points. So rook to e3 attacking the pawn. E5 is a move uh, that is given up the the D pawn, but actually protecting the uh, the E pawn would make the um, the black's position even more passive. Protecting it with one of the uh, knights would tie down the knight to that position and it would not result in anything good. 
So d takes c5, d takes c5, queen takes d5 finally, and this uh, is an amazingly active piece. Uh, rook to d7, harassing the, the queen, but the queen just simply retreats to e4. It's perfectly centralized. Rook to d1, trying to get some activity, but now once the uh, black rook is active, white can is uh, can simply trade it so uh black doesn't want that retreats to d8 uh bishop harasses again the active rook and um, all white's pieces are placed incredibly well black knights are simply sad pieces white queen uh, the black queen must protect an overstretched pawn on a3 uh the rook is being harassed all the time mm, and it has no real meaning to the whole position while white pieces are perfectly active so black rook uh, goes to a semi-open file as one would expect uh, but rook again to e3 queen to b5 nothing to do here uh, nothing to do here and after on move 41 the knight took on a3 black resigned because well um Black is doomed. Black is absolutely doomed. Two pawns down. Very passive position. Very weak king. And uh, the realization of the advantage would be uh, probably quite quick. Chess principle for today. Active pieces win games. That's all for today. Thank you very much.